Guys, welcome back. This is Eric the Steric, and we're gonna play the Stanley Parable. This is the end. This is the song that never ended. It just went on and on and annoyed the crap out of you. Not the loading signs. Loading. Still loading. I'm watching it. Uh, I'm not watching it. Oh, I'm watching it. Get into the loading. Feel the loading. Oh. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay. Step out of my office. Yes, Mr. Big Narrator Man. I shall follow your immediate instructions. Doo -doo -doo. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Not a memo! Mr. Memo? Oh, jeez. My place is horribly dirty. So dirty, how do I get work done here? And they even left their monitors on. Oh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, you're gonna tell me left? You. Person, I have no clue who you are. I don't like listening to you, and I don't know what the hell you say. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left. Ah, screw it, I'll just listen to you like a good servant. Yes, master. Do 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 do. Walking down the hall, going to a meeting room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I gotta visit the boss. Oh man, I'm gonna get fired. He's gonna be so pissed at me for not being at my desk doing my work. Oh, broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Oh, baloney, there's, let's see, there's duct tape, there's a wrench, there's even a mop. Or right, mops over there, here. and a bucket. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. But I like the pretty light. It's all memorizing. Ooh. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. But I like the broom closet. It's so much decoration in it. Are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Because my personal hell and it's fun? 
Oh, come on, give me some. Realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Really, you never thought about the broom closet. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you get to talk about this with your friend, you'll say, "Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite." I hope your friends find this concerning. Fine. If I only had friends. Big media had to bring up the past revelation issues. Oh, I hate you. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Nope, don't want to go. Stepping into his manager's office, Too Stanley late. was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. I gotta say for my boss, man, he got a lot of books. And he is a very dirty man. I mean, just look at all these books. They're all misorganized. Ah, how dare you. Although he's traveled a lot. He got some pretty pictures. He's very organized. His desk's least organized compared to what I was dealing with earlier. You know how to be a boss. Yeah. Get my boss. Okay. Ooh, button. I want to push the button. Okay, I pushed the button. And I pushed the push the button. Big head didn't tell me big button. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Ooh, pipes. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large <gasps> door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh. I'm being mind controlled? Ooh, escape. Escape all. Escape! I'm being mind controlled, I can't touch it. had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. I would die. The door I'm... behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. I don't wanna. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Yes, I did, you douchebag. Whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story. Trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss. I am like gonna die. The eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. <laughs> Oh, 
Farewell, it Stanley, is. cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Um. And yet it would be just a few minutes um. before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. Yes. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has Lights. been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Excuse me, is my headset died? I Do you see that Stanley squad. was already dead from the moment he hit start? Stanley. I feel foolish. All right, now we're back. Excuse me about that. It was my hands at being full. Oh, so many paintings. Brings the heart to us all. Business, 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 business. Business, 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 business. Violin cabinets. Very business like. Beep, boop, boop. Apparently I got the different area. Beep, play with the buttons. Boop, 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 beep, boop, beep. Let's see. Oh, it's the elevator. Sorry, the maintenance is the elevator. My copy here, let's copy my butt. Plant! Bastards, you stole my plant. Stole my plant. I think that would have been pretty badass, but... Okay. I would have liked it. Ah, we're late. Like everybody with their stupid opinions. I would have took that and left. Okay. Now the last question is that the narrator got. Phone. Yeah, I wanted to pick up the phone. Oh, this is quiet. I was hoping for a more elaborate, exciting thing. It's all good.
to do something. Do anything. Relaunch. Ooh. That'd be annoying recording for two years. Could you imagine having a narrator for two stinking years? Owning the same thing over and over. Ah, an exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. You done? You're done. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose. Ooh, I went squish. I chose to go squish. Very peaceful. Relaxing. Game again. <gasps> A soft wind oh, shut up, narrator. And perhaps rain started. Oh. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. Hey, that was different. Like to see weather, to be honest. Yes. When Stanley came to a set of two open left. doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. You know, I do get quite tired of being told to go to my boss's Coming office. To a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Right. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code. Because I'm just that line. intelligent and Amazing. smart. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Such a smirty egg at the elevator. Even though we all know where it's going again. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. So you're sort of shaped? So very shaped. What? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with Whoa. television screens. This would be what cool. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I do, but man, it would be cool playing a video game on this. Holy crap! And all the TVs. Button. Now the monitors jump. Whoa! Their true nature Lightning. revealed. 
Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Okay, that's just everyday life, your point. This mind-control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't Button. be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yes. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own uh. life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Yes, forever. Has somebody just an on off switch like the self-destruct button? Ah, off button. Off. What'd I do? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet... Even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Yes, I just have completely no moral care, no worry, no nothing. I just step to the door and Stanley say screw everybody. upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Guys, well, that was two endings of the many endings of the Stanley Parable. This is Eric the Hysteric, and I'll see you guys next time.